Okay, let's talk about LEDs. Uh, here's an LED, uh, a red one. And uh, what I want to talk about is how would you measure how much power is coming out of an LED? Um, you could use a light meter. So a light meter is just a, a, a photocell. So here's a silicon uh, diode, a uh, photodiode. And you could uh, shine it onto the photodiode, and that would tell you how bright it is. Uh, but it wouldn't tell you the total power. It only captures a certain uh, angle, of, uh, angle of power, a certain steradian of power. And so uh, maybe you could move it all around and try to mathematically sum it all up. Um, how could you do that? Well, you could use a really big photodiode, but you're still limited by angles. Uh, uh, how, how, so how do you, how do you do that? How, how do you measure the total power out of something like an LED or a light bulb or fluorescent tube, compact fluorescent, an LED light bulb? How, how do you, how do you do that? How do you measure how much power is coming out of an emitting idea, uh, emitting uh, device? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do some science. Uh, we're going to talk about um, something called an integrating sphere, also known as an Ulbricht sphere. And um, so if you have, uh, I'm going to reach around the camera here. If you have a, um, let's say you have a light bulb that, that you want to measure, and it's outputting light in all directions, then you need to measure light in all directions, right? So think of this thought experiment. Let's put this thing in a sphere, okay? And so we're going to put this thing in a sphere, and the light's going to come bounce around in here, and it's never going to come out. All that light's going to bounce around in here and bounce around and bounce around and bounce around. And so it's capturing all of the power. Okay, so now we have something that can capture all the power. But how do we measure what it's capturing? Um, how do we do that? So the, the idea of an integrating sphere is that we're going to put a window. So we're going to poke a hole in this thing, okay? And we're going to be able to look inside. And you can say, oh, but wait, a bunch of stuff's going to come out and then it's going to leak. Um, so we're going to put a plug in here, okay? So we're going to put a plug, and now things aren't going to leak out. And on the surface of that plug, we're going to put our photodiode, all right? And you can say, well, that's no good, because it's still only capturing a certain angle, a certain steradian. That's not going to work. But remember, these things will bounce around until they finally get there. They will all finally bounce around until they'll finally get there. And there is a steady state equilibrium that will happen. And so there will be some amount of power on this detector that's proportional to the total power inside. All right. So you can think of the power that's available from this light bulb ends up on the surface of this sphere. And so it's distributed over a very large area. And the power on that area is the power inside of this sphere. And we're taking some percentage of that total surface area. And if we calibrate the machine correctly, then we will measure what's inside. So let's say we have a 100 watt light bulb and we send that 100 watt light bulb to the Bureau of Standards and they measure it and they tell us that light bulb is 98.625 watts. Okay, they give us an exact number. And so we put that light bulb in here and we measure how much photocurrent we get out, how many microamps of photocurrent we get out of our diode. And we say, ah, our calibration was 98.6234, blah, 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 blah. And um, we, we calibrate the system, all right? And so I'm not going to go into the calibration of integrating spheres. It's very complicated and it's wavelength dependent and but it's a bunch of things dependent. Um, but get get the idea that we can do this, that we can have some type of reflective sphere and 
be able to measure some percentage of that and measure the total power inside. Now you have to be able to get the LED inside or the light bulb inside of the integrating sphere. Okay. So uh, you can do that if you make this big enough and you put hinges on it. Let's say it breaks here. There's a split line and you open it up and you put your light bulb inside and you close it down. Um, so they make, they make things like that. Um, a friend of mine uh, builds light bulbs in his garage. He has a, uh, he has a business where they're building a multi-spectral LED. And uh, so he bought himself a sphere. You can buy these. And he bought himself one that is one meter in diameter. Okay, so the diameter is one meter. And so he can crack his open. It's, it's, it's mounted on a big stand on the floor and it's hinges open and you hinge it open. You can put your light bulb inside and then you hinge it closed and you can make all these measurements. And um, so his is one meter in diameter. That's a very, very nice one. Multi thousands of dollars to buy that one. Um, I used to work at Philips and uh, in Eindhoven, uh, Netherlands, uh, there is a building uh, in downtown. And at the top of that building, um, they actually opened up the roof and they dropped in an integrating sphere and they built the building around the integrating sphere. I believe theirs is 10 meters in diameter. I think that's right. It might even be larger than that, but I, what sticks in my head, it was 10 meters in diameter. And there's actually like a little railroad system that you could put your light bulb on a little train track and you like, like it runs inside and then runs back outside and it, it's pretty cool. Um, so they have a very, very big one. I mean, they, they're kind of like the masters of light bulbs in the world, right? So they have a really, really big one. Um, but for LEDs, we don't, we don't need a super big one. Uh, we can use a, we can use kind of a tiny one. And you can think of this as, uh, okay, well, we have one, uh, calibration here. What if we poke, what if we poke another hole here? What if, what if we put another plug over here? Okay. And we're going to put a plug here and then we're going to put our LED right, right here. We're going to put our, we're going to put our LED right inside. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle. It doesn't matter because the light's just going to rattle around in here. So as long as it's inside, then you're good to go. Now people are going to say, well, you've got this place here that might absorb energy. Uh, and so you can try to paint that white, right? Uh, or paint it reflective somehow. So what, what's the insides of these things made of? Are they chrome? Like, are they like a mirror? Are they silver plated? What are they? What are they? Well, they found that the best thing to coat these with is a white material. You want something that's a very diffuse reflection. You want to be able to randomize all the angles and a really, really flat white paint basically is what would be really good to use in here. But you want your paint to be spectrally flat. And what that means is that as doesn't pen, independent of what wavelength you send in it, it always reflects the same number of, uh, same number of photons. So it's always like 98% reflective and, and no matter what the wavelength is. So there's a bunch of fancy materials, spectral on and, uh, and other materials. Um, barium, what is it? Barium sulfate? Uh, the white, white chalky thing. We used to m use that for these things. And a lot of times, even though you get a fancy spectral on sphere, you'll paint, you'll paint your little test fixtures and stuff with, with a barium white. Um, and there's, there's, there's fancier m synthetic whites these days. Um, anyway, so the inside is going to be white and we're going to poke the LED in a hole and it's going to rattle around there and then it's going to come out this hole. All right. Um, there might be one problem with this system. Okay. Let me draw a, diff a different picture because that was kind of, that was kind of getting messy. Okay. So we have our sphere and we have our detector over here. Okay. So this is our detector. And then we have a, a port over here. So there's a window here and there's a window here, and this is going to be our, uh, our led, right? And it comes in here and it bounces around, but there's a direct path. Okay. There's a direct path. And that can actually screw up your calibration because it hasn't bounced yet. You really want to have the things bounce around before they reach the detector to be accurate. So a lot of these integrating spheres uh, put in a baffle. And so inside of the integrating sphere, they'll put a little wall. And that little wall will be white, it'll be the same stuff. And so there's no direct path. It'll bounce off of that and then, and then it'll finally get over there, right? So there's this wall that, that separates the two, this, this port separation uh, with this wall in here, right? So anyway, that's, that's just kind of a bonus, bonus fact to have this, little, uh, have this little wall in there. 
Not all integrating spheres have that, but a lot of them do. And if they do have one, then you need to use it wisely. You need to make sure that your input and outputs are using it. A lot of times the ports will have four, four openings and you can do different things on the different openings. And so obviously you don't want to use these two because they see each other and these two would see each other. But, but it, this one has a, uh, if it has a wall in it, then you want to use these two. So you need to figure out which, which are the right ones to use. All right. So what do these things look like? Um, I have a couple. So let me show you one. Um, let's see here. Let me move this into the camera. It's made by a company called LabSphere. They're one of the most uh, prolific in making these things. Uh, let me move the camera back a bit. Things a bit on the large side. Okay, so it's on a stand. Uh, it's just on a stand. Uh, you can move it up and down. And uh, so it's, you say, well, wait a minute, that's not a sphere, it's square. <laughs> yeah, the, the outside is square, but the inside is round. Trust me, there's, there's a round cavity and there's like a big block of white, but there's a round spherical cavity inside, all right? And so this one has, uh, has a port here and I have a photodiode stuck in that port. And then it has a port here. I've got a piece of tape over because you don't want to get dust inside the thing. So if I pull the piece of tape off, I think you can see there's, a, there's some white in there. And there's just kind of a hollow in there. So let me get a flashlight. Okay. And you can see, whoa, you can see that thing. It reflects right back at us, right? So we introduce a little, a little bit of, uh, of light in there. You can see it all lights up inside that thing because it's all light in there. It's a really, really reflective light. It's like 99.9% .9 you know, reflective. Um, real fancy stuff, real expensive stuff. All right, so that's going to be our input port. And whenever we input there, the light's going to rattle around and it's going to come out onto this photodiode. And so we need to have some way of measuring the photodiode. And uh, so I'm going to use this, uh, this multimeter. And we will connect up the multimeter. We will set it to microamps. And all right, get this all on camera. All right, so we're measuring point 0.4 microamps, something like that. Well, that's the room light. So if I cover it up, there it goes to zero. So the room light's getting in there and causing some, uh, causing some photo current. We'll take our flashlight and we'll shine it in there. And whoa, look at that. <laughs> Lots of microamps. How much, if I kind of get, try to get all of the light in there, it's 300 microamps. And if we just put a little bit in there, there you go, six. Six microamps, 26 microamps. Yeah, depending on how bright it is, right? So uh, here's our, remember our test LED. Here's our test LED. I can pop that in there and uh, it's measuring about four microamps, something like that. Now we would have to, we would have to calibrate this thing. Um, one, if you, if you are working in a lab and you don't have access to NIST standards, National Bureau of Standards, um, when I was in the industry, we would actually have a big bunch of LEDs that we would send to the National Bureau of Standards. And there was this big calibration routine where they would measure them and we would measure them and the other people would measure them and they would rotate them around. And, and it was very, very accurate. If you don't have access to that, you can uh, kind of cheat a little bit. Um, you can take a laser. So a lot of times you'll be in an optics lab where there's laser, laser measurement equipment too. And lasers, the light is always in one direction. So it's very easy, easy to measure the power of a laser because it, it all fits onto the photodiode. Wherever you shine it, you'll capture all of the light. So there, there, are, there are very cheap uh, power meters for lasers. So let's say you take a laser and you point it on your laser power meter and it says you've got, a, you've got 0.1 watts. Okay, so you've got 0.1 watt laser. Now you shine it into this hole. Now you know you've got 0.1 watts of light in there. And then you can measure the amount of mi microamps. And you can say, okay, that many microamps is 0.1 watts. And you can calibrate it that way. So that's kind of a, a poor man's way of doing it. Um, if you want to do it a very fancy way, then you get a, a, a monochromometer and you know, it's calibrated for power. Blah, 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 blah. And anyway, you can get a, a whole thesis on calibrating these things. It's, it's, it's quite difficult. All right, anyway, so I thought I'd give you the idea here. This is how total power is measured. Um, in order to do this correctly, we'd have a, we would have a little white plug that would hold the LED and would shove it in here. It really doesn't affect, as long as you calibrate it 
however you use it, you're good to go. The, the problem with having a big open hole here is you're losing light. And so the efficiency of this of the system is low. And that's why you want to always have as much white in there as you can. So try to plug up as much of the hole as possible. But even if you have a little bit of black in there, it doesn't matter. It'll calibrate out. It'll all come out in the calibration. Anyway, so that's an integrating sphere. Let me show you one more before we go. Um, so this, this integrating sphere is probably about, I don't know. I bought, I'll tell you a story how I bought this. This is about an, maybe a 70, 70 or 80, 70 or 80 millimeter diameter sphere. Um, I used to go to this place that had auctions, uh, silent bid auctions on stuff. And uh, there, you bought them by the pallet. You bought stuff by the pallet. And there was a pallet of discarded electronic junk. And it was really quite worthless. And uh, so there was a big pallet of stuff. But sitting on top of the pallet was this. <laughs> they didn't know what it was, so they just threw on, the, on, on the, this pile of electronic junk. And so I bought the entire pallet knowing that, the, that this would pay for itself, you know, right from the get, oops, right from the get go. And um, dropped my ruler on the ground. Um, so, so yeah, basically I got this for free because I sold the other stuff in the pallet and uh, made money. I probably, probably made cash and got this for free. Um, so anyway, that's, what, that's how I got that one. I don't remember how I got this one. Um, I used to do a lot of optical consulting, and so uh, I don't remember where this one came from. Um, so this is a tiny one. So this is uh, probably a uh, maybe a 30 or 40, maybe 40 millimeter. Well, I guess the sphere comes out farther. Maybe a 50, 50 millimeter diameter, and this one's probably a 90 millimeter diameter. That's probably more accurate. 90 millimeters, 50 millimeters. Um, this one has a baffle in it that separates the two ports. This one does not. This one's just a sphere. This one has four ports, uh, one input port, and uh, I, have a, I have a diode on, on this one. This one has three ports, and two of the ports are separated with a baffle. All right. And so um, there you go. Introduction to integrating spheres or Ulbricht spheres. I don't remember where Mr. If Mr. Ulbricht... Uh, Sounds like a sounds like a Netherlands name, uh, so maybe he was there in Holland in the old days doing light bulbs. <laughs>